Welcome to the second and final video for this week. Uh, we are going to talk about bit shifting, but in order to do that, we are going first to revisit what we have previously said about signed marketing numbers and tools complement. Let us begin with revisiting things that we've already said in the previous weeks. And let's compare the signed magnitude numbers with two's complement. So the first bit when you're using a signed magnitude number is used to indicate the sign. You do the same thing with two's complement, but there is a big difference. The most significant bit in this case has a weight whereas with sine magnitude, it doesn't have a weight. Another difference is that with sine magnitude, you've got two representations of zero, one that starts with one, and another one that starts with zero, while there is only one representation of zero with two's complement. And a final difference, which shows why we prefer two's complement, arithmetic operations work smoothly. You don't need to manipulate the sign. The only thing you need to do is do your mathematical operations, do your additions, and then ignore carryouts from the most significant bit. Now in this slide we say more or less the same things, it's just that we also graphically represent them by using this array where we compare two's complement with sine magnitude. As we said, the first bit with two's complement has also weight, and there are two ways to represent zero with sine magnitude, while only one way to represent zero with two's complement. Another difference, which we did not note in the previous slide, but you can see here, is that with two's complement, you have an extra negative number that you can represent, which you don't have with sine magnitude. Note that this negative number doesn't exist in its uh, negation. Uh, there is no positive eight with two's complement in our example here. So now that we revised the basics of uh, two's complement and magnitude number systems, let's proceed with explaining. We're going to explain shifting by example. In the example that you have on your screen, you can see that the same number written twice, once here and once here. You're going to see now why. You also notice that we have we have indicated the bit positions. This is bit position 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to position 7. So overall, 8 bits. On the left, you see that we have shifted all bits one position to the left, while here we are shifting all bits one position to the right. By now, you should be asking yourself a question. What do I do for those bits that remain vacant? If you're doing logic shifting, then the answer is that you just fill it up with zeros. But besides logic shifting, there is something else which we call cyclic shifting. With cyclic shifting, what you do is that you take the most significant bit and you put it at the position that is more significant out of those that remain vacant. And then you do the same thing for the second bit. You do the exact opposite thing when you, the exact opposite shift when you are moving one position to the right. In other words, out of the two bits out of range, you get the more significant one and you put it at the place of the most significant bit and the least significant bit at the second place. So two things to remember from here. With logic shifting, you fill up with zeros. With cyclic shifting, you just recycle the bits that you shifted out of range. Now 
let's go step by step and show why shifting on the left by one position is an equivalent of multiplying by two. Remember that we always talk about the case of assigned unsigned binary numbers. So let's take this number as an example. It has three beats. We can always add as many zeros as we want on the left because it doesn't change the value of the number. You can write down in decimal the number like this, as you already know. Now let's see what happens if you shift all bits by one position on the left and you put a zero at the position of the least significant bit. You fill in with a zero on the right. As you can see, the representation of a number is pretty similar. What has changed is that for each and every bit, the exponent has increased by one, which means that you can rewrite this number by using two as a common factor, multiply by what you see in the brackets over here. And what you see in the brackets over here is the number that you started from. Therefore, it is safe to say that shifting by one position on the left is an equivalent of multiplying by two. Think about how easy it is to do multiplication this way. Now, what if you wanted to shift two positions on the left? That would imply multiplying by four. What if you shift a number three positions on the left? Well, that would have been like multiplying by 2 in the power of 3, or otherwise like multiplying by 8. Now let's see what happens when you shift the number on the right, to the right. Again, we're talking about unsigned binary numbers. Okay, we start with this representation of the number in the decimal system, the value of it in the decimal system. Then you shift all the bits to the right. Now, pay attention to this. We're always filling in with uh, zeros. But we're losing bit at position zero. So if you rewrite this number, the result is like this. As a common denominator, you use two in the power of minus one because when you shifted one position to the left, you decreased the exponent of each and every bit by one. So b2 had an exponent that was equal to two, and now it's one. b1 had an exponent that was equal to one, and now that exponent is zero. Therefore, the common factor is 2 in the power of minus 1, which, as you know, it's like dividing by 2. And at the same time, we lose precision. We lose the least significant bit. And this is why we say that if the least significant bit was 0, then the division is correct, because we suffer no loss. It was anyway 0. However, if the least significant bit was 1, then again we have a division, but it is an unprecise division. In this slide, we keep this note from the previous slide, according to which a division by 2 can result in either a correct division or an unprecise one. Now, let's see this through an example. Again, we have this example over here, the number 101. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. and its translation to the decimal system, which is 172. Notice the weights over here. Obviously, 1 stands for 2 in the power of 0, 2 stands for 2 in the power of 1, 2 in the power of 2, 2 in the power of 3, and so forth up until 2 in the power of 7. 
Suppose that we divide this number by 2 once. I would be like shifting all bits to the right and filling up with the preceding 0 here. Now the division was precise. And it was precise because previously the least significant bit was 0. Now let's try shifting the bits one position to the right again. Again, we have a precise division because previously the number had 0 as its least significant bit, which is why the division here in the decimal is also correct. If you divide 86 by 2, the answer is 43. But notice what happens here. The least significant bit is 1, which means that now we are dealing with an odd number. If you divide this odd number by 2, in other terms, if you shift all bits one or one more position on the right, then you lose precision. Instead of having a number that would have been the equivalent of 21.5, you got 21. So you lose a little bit of precision. We turn now to the case of two's complement. You should know by now that the most significant bit is the sign, and at the same time it has a weight of minus 2 in the power of n minus 1. Any multiplication or division by 2 should not change the sign. Let us now see that with a 4-bit string example. Again, we got the weights here. Obviously, since we have 4 bits, the weights are 1, 2, 4, and minus 8. We use this example. This number is the equivalent of number 4 in the decimal system. Notice what happens if you shift the bits on the right. The number becomes 2 and there is no change. If you shift it one more time, the number becomes 1 and there is no precision loss. Now, as we said earlier, since your least significant bit is 1, if you divide one small by 1, if you divide, sorry, if you divide one small by 2, then the result is a division which is losing precision. Let us turn now to the case of shifting one position to the left. We start by this number, which is number 1 in the decimal system. Shifting one position to the left multiplies the number by 2. Everything fine so far. We do again the same thing. Shift one more position to the left, and the number becomes 4. But if you try to shift one more position to the left, and because we're using 2's complement, we got a problem. The result is not going to be 8, the result is going to be interpreted as minus 8. This is because of an overflow. Now, it's easy to detect an overflow. You detect it when a 1 is shifted and takes the position of the most significant bit. This changes the sign. Again, in the case of 2's complement, this time we're going to show what happens when you're dealing with a negative number. So in our example, we got number minus 4, which is represented in the binary system as 1, 1, 0, 0. If you shift all positions, one position to the right, you have to fill up the gap with a 1 so that the sign doesn't change. As you can see, the division was precise. Now, if you shift one more time, one position to the right, and you fill in on the left with 1, the precision is kept and the division is precise. Now, notice what happens if you try to shift one more time at the right. Nothing changes. 
the final result will always be minus 1. On the right table over here, we see what happens when you try to shift a number one position to the left. We start with this big number over here. Remember that shifting on the left is the equivalent of multiplying by 2. So we shift all bits one position to the left and we fill in with a zero. This first division, this, sorry, this first multiplication gives us a correct result. And we do the same thing again. One position to the left, we get rid of any bits from over here that were the most significant ones in the previous stage, and we fill up the remaining parts with zeros. And we do the same thing again here. So notice at this stage that an overflow will happen if we try to shift one position to the left again. And this is because this zero is going to take the place of the most significant bit, which would turn the number from a negative number to a number which is not negative. Having said what we've said so far, now we can cross to this section that we explain how multiplication works. And we're going to do that with this example that you see on your screen. We are using a 4-bit string unsigned binary. The binary that you have here is an equivalent to 10, and the second binary is an equivalent to 9 in the decimal system. The way that we're going to do the multiplication is exactly the same that you are taught in primary school. So we focus first on the least significant bit here. 1 times 0 gives you a 0. 1 times 1 gives you 1. 1 times 0 gives you a 0. And 1 times 1 gives you a 1. Now I'm going to multiply with the second less significant bit. Well, this one is zero, and I'm going to shift the result one position to the left. So obviously, if you multiply by zero, all results will be zero. The same applies also here for the second zero that we have. And finally, when we reach to the most significant bit, which is one in this case, we do the multiplication one by one. Well, obviously, if it is one, then I'm going to repeat the number here. And then we just take the summation of everything. You can assume that implicitly here you got some trailing zeros, just to simplify things. So it's zero, one, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Obviously, this is an example where deliberately we got no carries. If you had any carries, you would just carry them and continue with uh, the summation. So what is the overall result here? Well, if you do the math, you'll find out that the equivalent is 90. Quickly speaking, this is 2, this is 8, now the next one is 16, you don't have a 32 but you do have a 64, now if you take the summation of all these, it gives you 90. Quite easy, isn't it? And again the same mathematical operation, only this time without my handwriting. And now we reach to the point of this presentation that we need to explain what is a little bit more difficult compared to the rest. 
and that is binary division. The best way to do that is via an example. And here's the example that we've chosen. But before we start, I would like to make sure that we all understand the terminology. So we have the divisor and the dividend. The dividend is the number that is divided by the divisor. So these are the steps that we're going to follow. Please pay attention to the steps. Pause the video and take a moment to read those steps. Now that you've paid attention to the steps, I would like to highlight the two most important ones. What we're going to be doing is that every time we will be dividing and comparing the divisor to the dividend. Let's write down the numbers. I will first write the divisor, which in binary is 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is the divisor. Next to it, I'm going to write the dividend. And the dividend in our case, 74 in binary format, is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And this is where we're going to be placing the quotient. Okay, so let's check the rules here. The first thing to do is to right shift the divisor and compare with the dividend. Now, what applies in this case is the second rule according to which the divisor is smaller. So, before subtracting, let me note that. I'm going to put 1 at the place of the quotient. And then I'm going to do a subtraction. And according to this subtraction, what I'm going to get as a result, and it's going to be my new dividend, it's going to be 1. There are some zeros over here, but I would rather not note them. What I'm also going to do is get the next zero, and this is going to be my new dividend. Again, I am comparing with the divisor. In this case, the divisor is larger. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put a zero in the quotient. My new dividend now is 1, 0, 1. And again, I am going to compare to the divisor. By doing so, once again, I see that the divisor is larger, which means that I'm going to put a 0 in the quotient and repeat the same steps again. My new dividend is 1, 0, 1, and I also get the next 0 over here. And I'm going to do a comparison again. Now, notice what is going to happen. This time, the divisor is smaller. This means that I'm going to put 1 in the quotient, and I'm going to do a subtraction. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I'm not going to keep the preceding zeros, or not to confuse anyone. So pay attention to the result. At this point, we have to stop because there is nothing to get from the original dividend over here. But what we do have here, I'm going to change the color to blue. This is our remainder. So overall, if we do this division, the result that we get is as follows. The quotient is 1, 0, 0, 1, which, if you make the conversion to the decimal system, it's 9, as you would be expecting here. And what you don't see here is the remainder. The remainder, which if you convert to the decimal system, is 2. Now obviously, if you do here the division, you will see that 9 is the quotient in the decimal system. But there is also a remainder 2. 9 times 8 gives 72, plus 2 the remainder, 74. And again, the same result, only this time we got rid of my handwriting. This is the dividend. This is the divisor in the decimal system and the divisor that we had here. And at the end of the day, we achieved to have this quotient which in decimal would be number 9, you can verify that, and we also found this remainder. Now, if you feel like you need to watch this part of the video again, it's absolutely okay. You're not the first ones that need to go through the steps of the division more than once. And with that, we conclude week four. See you in week five.